Hello everybody, welcome to another video on the Flight Sim Deck channel. Today we're in Louisville, Kentucky at Louisville International Airport, and we're going to be doing Southwest Flight Number 824 to Denver International Airport. It's early in the morning, normally this flight takes off at around 6.20 in the morning, but I pushed it back a little bit so we could have some daylight to get some nice footage of the flight today. Of course, uh, with Southwest, we'll be in the Boeing 737-800 today, and... Uh, Right now, we're just going to take a look at the route to show you the way we'll be taking over there to Denver. So we'll zoom in to Kentucky right here, and today we'll be doing the Apollo 3 departure. Going by Pocket City, Centralia, all the way over to Butler. To Hayes, and then that'll bring us into Denver. Here we'll be doing the the uh, Jagger three arrival, most likely landing runway one six left. By the way, the winds are right now, but that could change as this is a three hour flight, so we'll see about that. Um, but yeah, this is going to be the route for our great flight today. So we are preparing for the pushback, starting the number two engines. Engine, actually. It's my first time using the Louisville by uh, FS Dream Team. Came out recently. And um, I had no idea of what a large hub it was for UPS. More than half, I'd say about 60% of the airport is dedicated to uh, UPS operations, so I never knew that. It's got this small terminal here where we're, we're leaving from right now, where uh, it handles most of the, uh, the commercial stuff. A little bit of a cloudy day, a little overcast over here. Alright, we're going to start number one in now. I just did the normal shift D push back. I can't get GSX to work. It just won't. It just never pushes back. I don't know what goes wrong with it. Chocks are off. Even when the brakes are released. I don't know. I've gotten it to work before, but lately I can't get it to work. And then I don't like the PMDG push back. That seems to never do it quite right. So I'm just having to do the straight push back for now. Right, we're all ready for taxi. We're just waiting for this guy here to pass by. And uh, if there's one more, yep, there he is. And then uh, we'll make our turn over to, uh, we're gonna get on Juliet to Bravo. And that's going to bring us to 17 right, 17 right. Where, uh, like I said, we'll be doing the Apollo 3 out of here. Going up to 39,000 feet today. I have it set up for 30 right now, but about later on we'll be going up to 3 9 or 0. And uh, just um, had a good New Year's. Hope everybody out there had a good one. And uh, this is our first uh, commercial flight on the channel of the year. So now we're going to turn on to Bravo, and it'll be the last way down. Well, lately we've been fortunate to be at terminals that are right near our departing runway. Lately with the flights I've been doing, it's, it's been that way anyway, so uh, that's very nice. But we don't have to taxi too far. Less editing I have to do for the video. This airport sits at around 500 feet, it's close to 500 feet. And of course, we'll be going to the Mile High Denver International, which is uh, about 5,000 feet elevation. Where I really need to be doing some flights right now is on the East Coast. They're getting hammered with uh, snowstorm at the moment. 
think like 8 million people or so are under blizzard warnings. Or they were the other day when I was reading the news. But that's the place to do the, the flight. Maybe I, I need to do the next flight out there. Rare places that uh, get snow rarely, you know, sometimes they're getting snow. South Carolina, they don't, they don't get snow too much. But they're getting it. All right, we're pulling up to one seven right. Hold short, do our final checks. All right, we're ready to go. We're going to line up on one seven right and get ourselves out of here in the air. Got the um, immersive audio sound pack installed today, so you'll be hearing that on all the future seven thirty seven flights. It's a good sound pack. I like it a lot. Just need some new engine sounds. I think the sounds on here aren't bad, but they're, um, they could be better. Alright, so I'm going to be quiet now on this departure and let you listen to the sounds of Master Caution. Uh, well, we're going to, let's pull off to the left here and see what that's about. It went on right before 40% N1. I don't even know if you would call this an aborted takeoff because we didn't even... We didn't even really start with the roll yet. Alright, I'm gonna pull over here. We'll hold short. Just to get clear of the runway. weird. Didn't see the master to caution at all until we throttled up a little bit. I was trying to throttle up to 40%. I don't think it came on at about 30. Left and right over the Those were never even open, so I don't know why that would be on. Let's check. Let's see if they're open. I probably doubt they are. I don't want to open it for anything. Yeah, they're closed. Yeah, so what's the problem? I'm going to have to pause and Google this. So I looked it up. I found several forum postings of people having this issue. Um, either after leaving the gate or as they're about to take off to get the overwing um, exits. And uh, even though there were several forum posts, nobody had a solution for it. Everybody just kind of said it's a quirk of the 737 sometimes, the PMDG one. Um, some of these were from, from a few years ago, so I don't know. Uh, but a lot of people stated they just, if you take off anyway, the lights will go out. And we don't really have real life people on board, so pressurization issues aren't, uh, aren't an issue that would ground this simulation flight. So. We're going to uh, take off now. I'll be with you in the sky. We'll talk more about this in a minute. And uh, yeah, hopefully everything goes good with this flight. I'm getting a lot of frame dumps right now. It's my first time using this airport, so this is kind of... B1, this is happening. B1, rotate. B2. Those are the climb gear up. I'm going to stop. If it stops once I'm away from the airport, then we know it's the airport.
looks like it's smoothed out, which is good. So I'll make the turn. I want to practice my hand flying for now. So I'm in no rush to put on the autopilot. At least get it on our flight path. little bit above 250 knots right now, but not too bad. About six or seven knots. Which is why I want to practice my hand flying. Look at these clouds. We get to go through some nice clouds today. Speaking of clouds, the um, the new Rex Sky Force has come out. And do I have plans on getting it? Probably not. I am. Um, I have no complaints with the clouds I have now. I mean, I personally like them. I don't. I don't mind them. So I just don't want to pay, you know, the money to fix something that I don't think is broken right now. And uh, I've heard good and bad things about it. Just the tornadoes and stuff. But I mean, how often are you going to be flying in a tornado? And then the time. You know, tornadoes happen for such short windows of time. I mean, how would you even find one unless you did the Unless the, uh, you can go back in history and it picks it up or something, but, you know, usually nobody's flying around tornadoes. It's usually people on the ground that get footage of that stuff, so, um, but yeah, I'm happy with these clouds. I just use Rex. I mean, I'm using Rex anyway. They're clouds. It's off clouds, and then I use the, uh, the, uh, of course, I use Active Sky with all this. I just uh, hit 10,000 feet so we get the landing lights off. I'm going to turn off lights and now we're pretty much good. We can just ride this up to 390. So we're um, approaching 30,000 feet, about 10,000 feet to go before we level off the cruise. And sitting above the cloud layers now, there's a lot of them out there. Center fuel pumps can come off, we only have a little bit of fuel in that, so don't need those a little more. And it's a beautiful morning out there. Icing conditions aren't quite as bad as I thought they were going to be around here. Just yet, um, I don't know. We'll see if we can get up to cruise. So we made it to cruise, 39,000 feet. I don't do too many flights up to 39,000 feet, so it's... Uh, it's pretty nice up here. Usually I'm just a little lower, 36,000, or 37,000, so. That's, uh, it's nice being up in the south, too. Got a lot of clouds, though, so it's really something around. But the clouds look good, and there's some patches that let us see some land. A lot of snow coverage. We're a little over 30 minutes into the flight at the moment. 
Still around two and a half hours to go. And now we're leaving the snowy part of the United States. And working our way closer to Colorado. Where we will be met with more snow as it's a uh, much higher elevation. I'm not really sure what part of the U.S. this is at the moment because I'm, I'm, uh, I record the commentary for some of this after, after it's all said and done, so. All right, so we're, uh, we're starting our descent into Denver now. Should have about 20 minutes left on this flight, 20 to 30. As we got the long descent down to, um, we're gonna go down to 7,000 feet, which puts us about roughly 1,800 above the uh, above ground at that altitude and looks like we're still going to be landing one six left doing the Jagger or Jaeger I don't know which one we're going off here Jagger or Jaeger 3 arrival so I always like the most of the arrivals I've done into Denver it seems like you it's like a pattern while you're descending you kind of fly like a pattern you fly by the airport and then come back around So we have a couple more waypoints to go and then we're just gonna we got a vector to turn back around and line up with one six left. ILS approach today. Now I might actually have video footage of doing this uh, landing. I'll have to look it up. So if you guys want to check that out, I'll put it at the end of the video. And uh, you can watch the real flight. There's Denver International on our left. You can see one of the Pappy lights. Now it's time for our turn to land. Master Kosh, another. Uh, it's for using reserve fuel. I don't think we actually are, but the FMC thinks we are, so. Does anybody out there know any good uh, fuel planners? I use this one. Usually it's, uh, it's a free one. It's like fuelplanner.com or something. It's probably, I know it's not the best out there, but um, if any of you guys know of one, I use Simbrief. I haven't really seen anything on there for it. Um, but yeah, if you guys know any good planners, uh, shout them out in the comments section. I'll check them out. I think maybe it gave me the wrong reserve fuel. But I mean, it's saying it at the end of the flight, so that's not too bad. It's, if it's saying it in the middle of the flight, then you really got to screw up calculation. Six Papa Charlie, clear visual approach, runway one seven left. Just broke through ten thousand, we're sitting at nine, then the eight, then run we're gonna be going down to seven thousand. 
before uh, heading down traffic. the glide slope. Traffic. Sorry, the speed brakes, we got some traffic off to our two o'clock. Got a lot of stuff coming up this year for the Flights and Deck channel. A lot of, a lot of some uh, surprises for you guys. I got one surprise coming up pretty soon. Not too soon. Not within the week or anything, but you'll see. I think you guys will like this one. Uh, did some gliding in Poland. That video will be up very soon. And uh, then I need to. Um, what I really need to do is get. A320 flight done. It's been a long time, so hopefully get one of those done. Do something domestic. Or maybe, uh, I don't know, maybe Amsterdam to Heathrow or, or something in the U.S. I don't know. Maybe a U.S. flight first. So we're all ready to go. Oh yeah, and back to what happened in the beginning of the flight, the uh, nearly aborted takeoff, or maybe that would be classified as an aborted takeoff, but um, yeah, I can't find anything about that. I'm putting the landing gear down now. I'm getting real close to 10 miles away, and I want to get the gear out before that turn, and then we'll start putting the flaps, but uh, anyways, yeah, I don't know what that was about. Never had any problems with the uh, pressurization in the air. Um, I haven't seen that happen before. It just sounds like it's something that can randomly happen. If you guys have had that happen, let me know in the comments about that. But I've never seen the the overwing exit lights illuminate like that. They might have been on the whole time. It just, I didn't get the master caution until the throttle reached a certain percentage. So, but I don't, I don't remember seeing them leaving the gate. Everything blends in so much when it's when there's snow everywhere. But I can make up the runways right now. So they just got a little lighter in color. I don't know why they that happens sometimes. They were dark and now they're much lighter. So now we will uh, slow down. And we're lined up with the approach. Everything's looking good. Just got to get our flaps heading out. We got uh, one more notch to go.
disengaging the autopilot now. Got about a nine knot uh, crosswind at the moment. Again, here we're coming in a little bit high. But I'll see what we can do. 50, 60 knots and we're gonna start off and we're just gonna taxi down to the end of the runway here. Getting some stutters over at this airport too. I don't know why. It could be ultimate traffic. But yeah, our uh, terminal is right at the end of this runway to the to our left, so I'm just gonna go down to the end. And uh, head out that way. But that was a fun flight. That was a new route to do. Um, just got uh, Louisville Airport, so it was nice to try that out with a a route over to Denver. I hadn't done a flight to Denver in a few months, so or a month or so, I don't know. Kind of go to Denver a lot. I like Denver International. Stay tuned. Uh, replay will be coming next. We're just going to get off the runway first before uh, moving into that. And the terminal right there, straight ahead, is our terminal. We're actually going to be parking on the uh, the left side of the terminal, opposite side of the tower. Cut that landing a little early because it had this ugly jump to it, even worse than the one that it, you saw. Because um, it kind of jumped after I landed too, uh, so I guess that carries over to the replay. Unfortunately, um, I'm trying to work on my flare. I actually lowered the seat a little bit. I think I need to lower my view even more because, as someone pointed out in the comments, I kind of uh, I made me flare too much at times. So I'm trying to work on that. So we're going to head over to the gate over here. I'm not even sure what gate number it is, but we're going to take one. Have ultimate traffic turned off just in case it's infect, uh, infecting, affecting the frames. Which um, it does. You have to lower it. I lower it usually to about 50%. If you try to run it at 100, it's just uh, it's like night and day with the frames. It's, it's so bad. It's like unflyable. 
with the frames per second. So I try to keep it low and that seems to work out. But right now I have it off completely. I just don't want any more frame dumps. A lot of airports I've noticed are good around the airport until you get to the runway. The runway is the big test. If you can get down the runway smooth, then the developers did a good job. But some airports are just really, really choppy as you're trying to do your rollout, which is like the most crucial time. Switching over to the APU generators. Thanks, sir. Maintenance. Appreciate that request. Thank you, Mike. And here's our gate right here. We're taking Charlie 27. Okay, made a three calling for a little bit. Is this the first call? Yeah, okay, yeah, I had some uh, equipment issue up here. Yeah. The uh, city officer was able to uh, help me identify that. Appreciate the thing. Sorry about that. Anyone else on free facility trying to get a hold of this power? Alright, with the parking brake set, we'll cut off the engines. Get the seatbelt sign off. AP bleed can come on. Get the fuel pumps off, except for the left. Hydraulic pumps. Let's see, get the isolation valve to open. Packs are on auto. And now we're getting the jetway connected. Well, everybody, this is going to bring our flight to an end. Thanks for coming along from Louisville, Kentucky to Denver, Colorado. It's been a great one. I hope you guys enjoyed the video and um, many more coming soon. So check back. I'll see you guys next time. Take care.